thought, no, I'm not breathing properly. My breathing's very heavy. Uh, I felt tired and I knew straight away I'm not getting enough oxygen. To add to the suffering, a blanket of smoke now engulfing Victoria turns day into night. Probably within 30 seconds, the sky was completely black. Blacker than anything I have ever seen. Blacker than the darkest night I have ever experienced. I didn't understand why it was pitch black when it was still daylight five seconds ago. With no time to run and nowhere to hide, the firestorm hits with devastating effect. Only the lucky ones would survive. We thought, this is the end. It's, it can't go any further than this. This is the end. It's hit us. We could hear people screaming. We kind of closed our eyes as much as we could and tried to block our ears from hearing the screams, but you know, we, couldn't, we couldn't hide or shield ourselves from the noises. You were coughing, you were choking, you were, you were suffocating. It was unbearable. Just the smell was unbearable. Your eyes were burning, you couldn't see anything. There was still some hope in the back of my mind that we're going to find a way out. I'm, we're not going to die like this. We're not going to burn. We're not going to suffocate. We are going to make it out. We will make it out alive. The Black Saturday Inferno would devastate the people of Victoria and the whole of Australia. No one had ever seen a blaze like this before. Hundreds were dead or missing, over 2,000 homes destroyed and over half a million hectares, the size of a small country, was wiped out. It wasn't just the damage caused, but the way the fire behaved that shocked everyone. Its violence wiped out entire towns, literally within minutes. After the raging inferno passes through, those left behind, the survivors, make their way out into the open. We could see that there was nothing left, absolutely nothing left of the town. There was still glowing from things that are still on fire. The devastation was just incredible. The road was filled with cars of people who had tried to escape. Um, and we had to check the cars to see if there were people inside. And quite a number of the cars had deceased persons, including children in the cars, which was incredibly hard to deal with. The number of houses destroyed was almost complete. I can only describe it as a scene of hell. The, every tree was burning and all you could see on every hill was glowing. We could see this glow, this glow of death. It was like the world had come to an end. I've never felt fear like that in my life. It was like the world had exploded. A bomb, a, a holocaust, call it what you want. It was all about survival. There were many people that were well prepared, as, as well prepared as, as we were, that stayed and perished. So how we survived, I really don't know. the entire town, all burning at one moment. It, it was impossible, and it was happening. Just disbelief. As a firefighter, I just felt completely useless, um, as though, you know, we were too late. 
the fire had already been here and we couldn't stop it. Incredibly, 90% of those killed in the Black Saturday fires died in the three hours between 6 p.m. and 9 p.m. If ever there was a perfect storm for a bushfire, this was it. A series of unique events had conspired to create a firestorm so destructive it will forever change the way people perceive fire safety. Even on a global scale, this was a fire unprecedented in history. It wasn't until early the next morning, in the light of day, that the utter devastation of Black Saturday was revealed to the world. Nothing could have stopped it. You could have had a hundred Elvises in the sky and they would just would have been swatted out of the sky. You could have had a thousand tankers and they all would have just burnt. There was nothing on this earth that was going to stop that fire once it got going. Nothing could have prepared anyone for what we faced. Probably if I had more fire trucks at my disposal at the time, I might have put, it, put them lives in danger and lost, more, lost firefighters. I'm sure I would have lost firefighters. Any firefighter with all the best protection equipment on, with the best designed truck in the world, um, an aircraft that carries the most water and the most efficiently delivered water was not going to stop this fire. This was a natural event of some significance that man could not stop. It really was this whole sense we'd failed, you know, we'd, we'd let our community down, that um, how could this have, this have happened? If you were going to evacuate um, everybody who was potentially at risk on Saturday, you would have evacuated somewhere between half a million and a million people. And I don't know how you'd get them out. Frankly, you can't do that. If you wanted to look at the total amount of energy that's given out from a, a fire in terms of the amount of energy that was given out by the atom bomb that, uh, that uh, was used in Hiroshima um, would be equivalent to somewhere between two and four hundred of those bombs going, going off at once. What we saw on Black Saturday uh, was a confluence of several events that uh, all came together on that day to make the perfect firestorm. We had the rocketing temperatures, we had a very heavy dry fuel load. We had low humidities and we had very strong winds coming off the Australian desert. All of these things came together and uh, generated the worst fire conditions we've probably yet seen in the history of Australia. The 7th of February in Victoria was a very special day because of the extremity of the conditions, something that we haven't seen in 150 years of uh, recorded history and it's something that we're likely to perhaps see more of. And so. We really need to prepare ourselves for more events like this and I guess with changing demographics, changing technology and, and changing climate, um, we need to make adjustments to our current way of operating. We all lost a lot of friends, beautiful people. Very, very tragic. I don't know if we'll ever get over the fact that so many people died. I think this is a once in a lifetime fire. God help us if it isn't. God willing, we don't see another one. Hello there. 
Sunny looks as though we're going to continue to see some rain affecting the Northern Territory. So this is all due to the remnants of Tropical Cyclone Paul. So it's been raining there for the last couple of days, still continuing into Sunday. Further south of that, dry and quiet weather. And we've got slightly fresher but sunny conditions in Perth with the rain through New Zealand edging north out of the South Island. Better conditions for Hong Kong uh, with that rain just edging that little bit further north there. Certainly better conditions for Japan as the rain eases clearly away and we're looking at 13 degrees the high and dry weather conditions prevail. There's our usual showers through that central belt into Indonesia, some of them heavy and widespread into the afternoon. For Bangladesh we've got some rain. We've still got the heat though a feature in northern India and even the showers across the borders of Pakistan and Afghanistan abating somewhat into Sunday. Talking of showers we could see some of those into the western half of Saudi Arabia I think during Sunday afternoon. Rain eases west out of Madagascar 